doodle bud. Today I'm doing my top 10 pens from 2023. Let's get to it. Before I get started, let's go through a few quick points. I'm only including pens I reviewed in 2023. Some of the pens were sent to me for free. Some of them I paid for myself that had no bearing on where they were in the list. Number three, pens number 10 through four are just in no particular order. I'll put pens one, two, and three in an order. Uh, and number four, yeah, I got full reviews and all the pens I'm going to mention, so check my channel for details. I'll do my best to put info in the description. Starting off at number 10, again, in no particular order, let's see which one we got. Sneaking it out so you can't see the others is the Diplomat Excellence A2. I just love this pen. I think it looks really sharp. Gorgeous uh, spring clip here, just how it works. I like clips that you can push on the back and they open. If it makes it, you know, slipping it into a, uh, a shirt pocket easier, you can just pop it in there or notebook, whatever it is. Snap cap is just, oh, love this snap cap. Such a good slip cap that we got going on here. Very comfortable in the hand. This is beautiful red, all sorts of lovely colors. There's a really nice green that I like too. There's browns, there's just, I think there's something for everyone. Super comfortable, it's weighty, but not too heavy. I could maybe see for some folks it'd be too heavy, but I really enjoy it. The nibs are fantastic on here. Posts, all sorts of good stuff. It seals, it just works. Really no negatives about this pen. It's a joy to use. I look forward to every time I pull it out and you just pop it out, go to write. It's always ready to go. I think this looks gorgeous. It works great, fantastic pen. Number nine, but again, no particular order, is the Graf von Faber-Castell Tamitio, or maybe it's Tamitio, don't know 100%, but just has those classic stylings that uh, Graf von Faber-Castell has, especially with the cap, that's sort of a trademark type thing they have going on with all their pens. Lovely clip, again, it's another uh, slip cap, snap cap deal. Just goes on there nice and subtle, nice and quiet. I think it's great styling. This makes a great business pen. Again, it has a little bit of weight to it. I sort of enjoy that. Their uh, nibs out of the box, I think, are some of the best nibs there are. It just, I think it looks great. These ribs that run along here, it's comfortable. This, I mean, it does not really a section. It's more of a styling cue. It's so subtle, uh, you know, to go with it. There's not a big bump or anything so that you're not supposed to just grip it right there. You just grab wherever you feel it's comfortable and you're rewarded with a lovely writing experience. It does post, that might make it back heavy for some folks, but for me and my hand size, it's great. And it's it's just a fantastic nib. I think it looks fantastic. This, I really like, I don't put many pens in my suit jacket pockets. I put this one in there, uh, whoops, <laughs> quite a bit. And I just love the looks of it. I think it's a great pen. Um, one little thing I've noticed after using it for a while, it's not like the best pen I have for sealing. It's also not the worst. It's pretty good. If you get a, an ink in here that's reasonably wet, you can last quite some time, uh, minimum two weeks. But I, I, you know, I even tested it over a month and there's some inks I have in here where, um, you know, leaving it inked cap on, month later, pull it out and it writes right away. If you have inks that are a bit drier, it will dry out a little bit quicker on this pen. But if it's uh, in regular use, you're not leaving it for three, four months, and then you go back to expect it to write right away. There are pens like that. I find this is probably not the best pen for that, but one you're gonna use frequently. Man, I, I this is probably one of my most ink pens of the entire year. Let's put that back in and pull out another one. What do we got here? Oh, we got the Peniter Modern Times. I uh, was sent this one by Pen Chalet. This is a very interesting design. They say it's the most comfortable grip. For me, it's extremely comfortable. I really enjoy how it sits in the hand. I, I just kept going back to this pen. As soon as I inked it up, I was just all over that, and I just have loved it the entire time. I was quite worried with how well it seals. Uh, magnetic cap pens are kind of sometimes notorious for not sealing that great. You can make it seal well, but a lot of times they don't. This one has sealed surprisingly well. All has to do, if we can get contrast here, uh, with this little O-ring, this little gasket here at the bottom, and how it fits up there into the cap. That is the sealing mechanism on there. And I gotta tell you, it works surprisingly well. 
uh, I was inking this with my you know very uh, favorite ink I like which is my uh, octopus fluids koi blue uh, really enjoy that ink quite a bit I just use this pen all the time for that I was just a joy to use nice and smooth it's got this captive converter in here and uh, yeah just it looks different but I like that about the pen it feels different I like that about it as well and again I like you can set it down flat doesn't roll just all in all really great pen for a lot of people they probably don't like the looks of it or it's not comfortable that's fine I can respect that but for me one of my favorites from this year since we're doing that pen we might as well go straight to this pen this is my Omos 360 I picked it up earlier this year second hand did some work on it did a video I've been wanting one of these for a long time and it's it's really really good uh, I <laughs> It fits in the hand, just holding it right now. I just go, man, that feels fantastic. I think it looks beautiful. There's really no other pens out there that have this styling to it. Again, I don't, I haven't had one screw cap yet that I've shown. Anyways, I guess I like slip caps and snap caps. It's great. Piston convert, uh, piston filler here as well. Everything lines up when you snug up the piston as well. It's just beautiful Italian styling. I mean. Look at the band on there. Look at the nib on there. The swoop on that clip. Just absolutely lovely. It's been out of commission for a bit because I just, the, the nib needed some work when I first got it. I did some work on camera to show you and it works well. It needs a little bit more of a tuning. So I un, uh, uninked it, flushed it out with intentions to get some work done on it. But then I had a move going on, all sorts of other stuff. I've settled now. I think I'll spend one night just going through and then just fine tune it to get it exactly, exactly where I want it. So it's just absolutely perfect. So I'm looking forward to doing that and it's really good. One thing I have noticed is it's not the best at sealing. Uh, that's sort of a, an Achilles heel with this pen. I don't know, hope maybe the nib thing will fix it a little bit, but the sealing on here isn't fantastic. If you use it regularly, mine's fine. I'd love to actually hear from you. If you've got an OMAS 360, how is it for nib sealing? Maybe there's something up with mine or maybe my little nib issue I have will fix it. I find it skips a little bit sometimes, so I, I know why it does that, but I need to tune it. So that's the only drawback I've experienced with the pen. Maybe I can fix it, and maybe I can't. Maybe I can 3D print something and put it in there to make it seal a little bit better. Nonetheless, it is just gorgeous. If I use it regularly, it's great. If I let it sit for a bit, so far it's been drying up, but maybe that will get fixed. But just one final look at that before I put that back in the box. What a gorgeous pen. Sneak that one back in here. What else should we pull out? Oh, let's do this one. This is a classy pen. This is my Waterman Karen and I've always wanted one of these and I wanted it in this color. So this is, oh, I forget the name of it, full review will have it, but it's like a shimmer green or something like that. I got to try out one of these, I was just in black at a Vancouver Pen Club meeting. Someone had it, uh, I wrote with it and just went, yes, that confirmed everything. I mean, just classic styling. This thing is beautiful and this color is fantastic. Don't know if the camera will do it justice. Probably not because the focus is always terrible. Inlay nib. It is a cartridge converter pen as well. I got a really, really good deal on this one as well. Second hand nib needed some work. I think that's why I good, got a good deal on it. Just everything about it. It just speaks classy. Everything you like in a fountain pen, it has gorgeous looks. Like that's so nice to see the nib like that. It's again, a little bit rare to get inlay. Beautiful colors, lovely writer. Yeah, this has been just a great, great pen. I love using this one. I should, I might ink it up right after this video and, and get it back in rotation. Two left in the top seven, eeny, meeny, miny. Let's go with Mo. Let's go, oh, if I can grab it. Oh, I don't wanna show the other one and reveal it. There we go. Oh, don't want to see. Oh boy, let's put that back. There we go. So this is the Good Blue L130. He, uh, this was sent to me by Sunil from the Good Blue. I saw the uh, initial postings of the pen. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I wasn't sure if I'd like it or not. Turns out I love this pen. It's really cool. It's a very subtle design, very minimalist. I like the brass grip section on here to go with the rest of the body. The cap slips on just really, really nice. And just 
even the sound it makes and how it goes on. I do have a really wet ink in here and I'm getting a lot of nib creep and this has happened a few, it's only happened with this ink, but it happens a lot with, with the ink I have in here. So I'll probably switch out the ink, but it hasn't happened with any other uh, inks I've done. So I don't know what's going on, but it's just a natural writer. It feels great in the hand, great for journaling. The cap comes off with just like half a turn, three quarter turn. Threads are at the bottom and you just get down to business. You start writing and I don't know, just the weight, the dimensions, everything, the feel, it just feels fantastic to write with this pen. Uh, I also included with it, I have the Happy Medium, their medium point size nib in here right now. So Neil uh, included a zoom nib with this, also a broad, but the zoom nib is just fantastic. I, I'm, I'm probably gonna swap the nibs out and put that one back in rotation as well. Super fun nib. I think it really suits this pen because it's a bit of a unique, odd looking pen. It just works though. It's great. Only one pen left so I can show them all to you. And so the last one here is right here out of focus as usual with this camera is a vintage Pilot Vanishing Point. I've wanted one of these for a long time. I never really was into uh, Vanishing Points. Then I tried the Mahjong A1. And I realized it's a pretty smart feature to have the clicker on there. I quite liked it. Then I got a real va uh, vanishing point, a modern one, enjoyed it. But whatever reason, I kept looking at the vintage ones and it just really had to do with this one piece, nose piece and the faceted body. I just thought, I think this is gonna be better. Sort of like with my Vintage Pilot Elite. So they have the modern one as the E95S. I've heard great things about that pen. I just didn't like the looks of it. I found this vintage one and instantly fell in love. And it has been a fantastic pen. Absolutely adore it. My vintage vanishing point was the same way. Also got a really, really uh, attractive pricing on this one. So much so I posted the link to the store that was on eBay. It sold out in under 12 hours. I messaged the guy, said, do you have more? He said, yes, he posted them. Another batch of 30 sold out in like 24 hours. So yeah, these were all like new old stocks. Fantastic shape, great pricing. Just dropped the camera there, but uh, been rewarded with a lovely pen, super reliable. I like the feel of this vintage vanishing point over all of the other, whether it's a legit one or the Mahjong A1. I prefer this over all of them. And I'm, uh, yeah, I can't get enough of this pen too. So that is seven of my top 10. The last top three pens are in this little case. As I open the case to reveal the top three, I'm still a little unsure of the order. Okay, I've made up my mind. Number three is the Enso Puma in Urushi. This was recently sent to me by Carlo from Enso. This was his very first Urushi pen. He just loves the whole process and the looks of Urushi. And he shared one with me. This is a limited first batch. He did only 50 pens. And I never understood why these were so special until I got to hold one and I realized right away. It just feels fantastic. Like just a natural writer. This could easily be number two instead of number three or even number one. They're really all super close together. Honestly, it's almost all a tie. But it just feels so good in the hand. The nib is quite nice but really just the whole package. I love the uh, vermilion red Urushi underneath. They have the black coat over top and it just comes through in those little sections there. It makes me think of, uh, you know, going into a sushi restaurant and you get those little, sometimes it's in a bento box or your little bowl that has your miso soup. I never realized those were, they're always plastic, the places I go, but they're like fake Urushi. This is the real deal. So all that black and red, it just looks just stunning. I can't get enough of this pen and the feel of the lacquer in your hand. So yeah, I could write with this pen for hours and I have, and I've enjoyed every single minute. It could easily be number two or number three. I, like I said, this is a knockout of a pen. This was a late comer to 2023, just before the wire. And this is the Montegrappa 007 special issue. If you haven't seen a review of this one, I've just posted it. Super cool. 
incredibly unexpected that this pen was sent to me and I got to keep it. I just, that kind of blew my mind. I've never had a pen like this and it is just awesome. I love writing with this one. I, the nib is fantastic on here. Never had a 14 karat gold stub nib before and I've been pleasantly rewarded with how it writes, the feel of it, all the little details I gave in the full review, but how it sort of pairs with the classic James Bond Walther PPK from the knurling here that represents the grip on the pistol. The, you here you have the end, so the rifling, whether it's at the start of the movie or on the pistol itself. This is the barrel protruding out. This whole cap represents the slide to, to cock it and chamber around. You got the grips here for that. And same with on here, there's a little safety mechanism. So I thought this was super cool that this essentially is supposed to be the matching pen to go with James Bond's pistol, which is so iconic in the movie. And it feels great in the hand. I have drained the converter, I think it's at least three or four times in a very short period of time, because I just want to keep writing with it. Even if I'm writing nothing, I, I want to write with it. So I think this is going to be in heavy rotation. It's designed to write, it's meant to write. That nib is, the, like I said, the stub. I think this is fantastic for signatures. And another thing I wasn't able to mention in the video, but um, I was I was given permission afterwards, after I published it, they're even honoring the discount code, the DoodleBud10 code. So again, I'll have a link in the description. Um, if this is something in your price range that you've considered, I know it's an expensive pen, you get an extra 10% off too. So that was super cool they did that for this pen. But uh, I will be continuing to use this pen a ton, along with the Enso. Puma Urushi, and also, especially along with pen number one. And number one for 2023 is right in the middle. This, I think, is number one because I was pleasantly surprised. This is a vintage uh, Mont Blanc Noblesse, and it's in the full gold body. I don't know what it was, but this year I wanted a full gold pen with some cool type of stuff on the barrel. And there's lots of pens out there. For whatever reason, my instincts told me, I think I'm gonna like this pen. I was pleasantly surprised with one, the nib, how it wrote. I had a feeling this thing would feel really cool in the hand and write lovely, and it does. It, it's weird, it's soft and it feels bouncy, but the nib doesn't really bounce. It's interesting. It has a strange little grind. It's a little bit of an architect grind on it, but it's really uh, nice and smooth. It posts on there nice and secure. I was worried with this pen that it wouldn't seal very well. This thing seals fantastic. I did a test, I left it for, it was uh, over two months, popped the cap off, wrote with it, and it was spot on. This thing has not skipped a beat since the day I got it and put ink in it. It has written every single time. Uh, I normally like thick pens. I have a big hand, so a long, thin pen is something I typically just would not even look at. But for whatever reason, I just thought, I don't know, I think I'm going to like this pen. Got a great price on it, just over 100 bucks. So I thought that was quite nice as well. And every time I put pen to page, I just go, wow, this is a great pen. What a find. And so that's why this one is my number one pen for 2023. I love the writing experience. It's unexpected better than I anticipated. I thought there'd be problems, but this has been a fantastic pen. It just works, and uh, I think it looks sharp. It's it's very unique from the rest of my pens. These are fantastic. All the ones in here are fantastic. I've had many other pens that weren't in the top 10 that have all been great, but uh, for one reason or another, this one, I don't know. I just really connect with it. I wanna keep going back to it. It's different, it's unique. And I was just really pleasantly surprised, especially for the price I paid as well. And uh, I didn't think I'd like it, but I got it anyways, and I love it. So those are the top three. These are the other top 10. It's been a really good year for pens for me, and there was a bunch of other fantastic pens I received as well and purchased. And I only had a really a few, a couple bad pens the entire year. Everything else has been fantastic. I understand most of these pens are quite pricey, I will be doing a video soon on what I think are some fantastic pens for just getting into the hobby or more budget uh, friendly ones like well under the $100 range and well under $50. There might only be one or two that are $50 or above. 
but most of them will be a lot more uh, lower priced. I'll keep your eyes out for that video because I am working on it. One way to make sure you don't miss it is you hit subscribe. That's a good idea. Another good idea, thumbs up, and even better, let's comment. That's it for now. Catch you next time. <laughs>